this week on Alan's Antics. First off, what planet is this woman, Nikki Morgan, on? Where does she think she's living? It's certainly not the same ball that I'm living on. This is from telegraph.co.uk from the 29th of March 2016. Young people will no longer be able to go into railing safely if Britain leaves the European Union, the Education Secretary has said. I'll just let you pause and think on that for a moment. For the sake of having to maybe buy some of your own insurance and maybe apply for a couple of visas, just like you do if you have to go to anywhere else in the world that's outside Europe, I'm a journalist. If I want to go on holiday to America, I have to apply for a special visa just to go on holiday, simply because I'm a journalist and they want to keep a closer eye on me than just the usual people who maybe just want to go to Disneyland or travel down Route 66 and, you know, there's special visa waivers and all that kind of stuff. But not for me. Even if I'm not working on a story. Even if I'm just going on holiday with my family. I and they have to go to the US Embassy in London and have an interview and then they decide whether I can go on holiday by issuing me a special visa just because I'm a journalist. And Nikki seems to think that it's going to make it really unsafe for young people who fancy travelling around Europe just for the sake of it. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. So it seems that Schengen is falling apart, and even the European Parliament Europal TV are showing videos which show that the crisis is becoming more than even they can handle, and this can only lead to one thing, an upscaling of their reaction. And this is going to mean more military, it's going to mean more police, and it's going to mean the strengthening of the outer border of the Schengen Zone. And that's going to have a massive impact on everybody in the EU. Dan Jarvis, his path to becoming Prime Minister. This is a political fantasy. A self-projection, you might say, that may or may not come true. But it is important to note that sometimes self-fulfilling prophecies do indeed come about. It is May 2016, and Labour have just been trounced in the council elections under the dubious leadership of Jeremy Corbyn, losing over 200 seats to the Conservatives, and have been obliterated in Scotland in the MSP elections. A personal dream and self-fulfilling prophecy has come true for Dan Jarvis, a man born to be Prime Minister, and for all those who trust and believe in their own intrinsic powers at their very own disposal. Peter Patton is an international PR and strategic advisor. Follow Peter on Twitter at PJPatton or email peter.patton at gmail.com. A forward-looking story and a hope and a dream from Peter Patton there about Dan Jarvis, his selection for the new Labour leader, who could possibly win, given the chance. In a country where everything seems to be for sale for the right price or to the right crony, it seems that UK Steel does not fall into that bracket. Because Tata plans to sell its entire UK steel operation. So, where's their bailout? Eh, Mr. Osborne? Where's their bailout? Or don't you have a friend who's in the steel business? And some news for parents across the pond over in the USA, which, of course, <laughs> we'll be seeing here soon enough. Feds to fine schools for not following Michelle Obama's lunch rules. This is a proposal. It's not yet in place, but you can see where it's heading. And this, like I say, is just the sort of thing that the EU would do to every single school in the European Union. Find them for not sticking to the rules and kids selling black market salt now as i say at the start of the article it's not very often you'll see me or hear me defending an mp but in this case i just needed to speak out 
Back on the 10th of March this year, I sent an email to Henry Bellingham MP simply because he's my constituency MP. And the tweet, take a look at it at radiofreeuk.org forward slash blogs forward slash Alan, you'll see the picture of Henry Bellingham. The fact that this picture was released onto Twitter saying that he's Henry Bellingham, Tory MP for North West Norfolk, and he receives £1,300 an hour for lobbying for a mining company in Africa, and I voted for disabled people to lose £30 per week, is false as it stands right now, and according to Henry Bellingham, direct from the horse's mouth. The point I'm going to make is that if you're going to make accusations about MPs who are voting for disabled people to lose £30 a week, you need to check the facts. And I had to go all the way back to 2014 when I questioned Henry Bellingham about his connections with this mining company. And the response was exactly the same. He's not benefiting in this way. If these disability rights campaigners are going to make accusations like this, they need to check their facts because all they do is lose credibility. And credibility is far more important and has far more value than money. Well, that was just a little snapshot of the week on Alan's Antics on RadioFreeUK.org. To hear the full recordings and a whole lot more, go to RadioFreeUK.org and there'll be more next week. Take care and have a safe one.